good. How's it going, my friend? Good, how are you? Awesome. So, yeah, uh, a little uh, background. Apparently, I tattooed you a couple years ago. Oh, yeah. Uh, you tattooed a uh, New Hampshire tattoo that says, get lost. Nice. All right, I'm going to turn that down a little bit. Nice. So, how's life been treating you since uh, since all that? You've been the uh, been. Did you did you were you into the Bigfoot stuff like then too, or were you? Is this kind of like a recent? Uh, I believe you gave me that tattoo um, shortly after I had my encounter. Oh. So yeah. Huh. I'm a I'm a chatty tattooer, so I'm surprised I didn't uh, I didn't wrench that out of you. Oh yeah. I spent, so so when you had your encounter like it then you started this like New Hampshire Sasquatch is it just like a your page is it just like kind of like a, going over like encounters that have been like in the air, northeast I saw some in Vermont some uh, yeah one... so um I take um sightings from basically anywhere in um the United States or uh, even other countries I've received some um such as uh, Norway. Oh, nice. And uh, I believe I got one from uh, Russia, from a uh, tourist from over there. Um, but anyways, I mean, I started it, I believe, back in late 2019, 2020, yeah. around that area. Um, right around when COVID first started. Otherwise, um, yeah, I mean... I noticed that New Hampshire was not really uh, well represented in uh, the Bigfoot community. Yeah. <laughs> it's um, especially on the BFRO, mm -hmm. which we'll get into that a little bit more later. Um, but yeah, I just want to give people a voice that may have not had a voice before. And I mean, here I am today. It worked out pretty damn well. Yeah. Yeah, man. So, yeah, because I was a. Uh... You know, I've always been interested in, like, Sasquatch, Bigfoot. I love all the paranormal and all uh, that kind of stuff. So when I was looking at, um, I found, like, the Wood Devil stuff, and I was like, oh, man, this is, like, super cool. And then it led me into, like, hide-behinds, and, like, then there's a whole bunch of, like, um, like different cryptids that are basic that fall under underneath the, like, Sasquatch umbrella. So I was just like, oh, how can I? I, I would love to get somebody on to talk about Sasquatch and, uh, I wanted to see yeah, if I can. Got a yeah, so I was like, "Oh, got a, got a, some uh, local from New Hampshire, so we can uh, come on and we can just chat about some of the stuff." So, with so you have that you have a page that basically document like people contact you and you document encounters, right? Um, yeah, as a matter of fact, I had uh, two recent ones come in uh, this week, and I mean it's not all the time. You have to understand course, that yeah. you know Sasquatch is. I mean, a, a animal, basically, from what I can tell. Um, <laughs> so you're not a... Uh, that not a lot of people see. Oh, sorry. You're not a... Uh, uh, you're, you're, not, you're more of the biological and not on the mystical side of uh, Sasquatch belief? Yeah. Yep. Yes, very much so. Judging from my encounter... Um, yeah very much flesh and blood yeah so i guess maybe we should start off with like your encounter if you want to talk about that one first and we can branch out from there yeah so my encounter happened back in um 2018 on thanksgiving day even though it was uh at night um i was driving in um nottingham new hampshire mm -hmm. uh you know where that is yeah i reckon um and I was grieving the loss of one of my um, best friends that passed away. Um, Sorry to hear that. So, I mean, thank you. Riding down back roads is kind of a therapy in a way yeah. <laughs> for people. So I was riding down a road called uh, Stevens Hill Road. And I was going a little bit faster than I uh, probably should have. And I was coming around this little... Um, bend on the road and my high beams caught what appeared to be uh, tree, uh, tree reflectors on the uh, 
pine tree yep. that it was next to. Um, so as I got closer, I kind of focused in a little bit more, realized it wasn't a um, tree, to say the least. Uh, what the creature did, uh, it raised up its right arm to kind of block out the light from its eyes. Yeah. And it kind of stood there. And I think I caught it in mid-stride. Um, I slowed down coming towards it and I was like oh my god like what the hell is this thing and part of me like knew what it was because you know I've been into the cryptozoology yeah. topic but it was at a moment that I was not thinking about it at all I wasn't expecting it it just yeah you weren't scanning the horizon like, looking for it you know yeah exactly I kind of caught it off guard and it caught me off guard so I came to a full stop and it starts um, lowering its arm slowly, still looking at me. And its eyes have this um, auburn, orange auburn kind of uh, eye shine, not eye glow. I make sure to uh, let people know because yeah. it is reported that their eyes do glow. And it just kind of looked at me with this kind of like disappointed kind of like face on it. Like, what the hell are you doing here? Yeah. Uh, and I mean, it was definitely a male. I did see genitalia. Mm -hmm. Um, it was probably from what the measurements that we got, um, after we revisited, it was just over eight feet tall. Okay. And I mean, this thing was not bulky as in like muscle builder but it was definitely an athletic build mm -hmm. um the hair on it was a uh, probably around like six inches on the body itself um what appeared to be like dark brown to black but i noticed when it had its arm raised up the rays of light that were coming from my high beams illuminated its fur in a way that kind of looked like a uh, reddish color mm -hmm coming from the fibers of hair and there's little bits and pieces of snow and like ice that were in it so this thing's kind of just staring at me and I can see the steam coming from each breath it was taking and then it just puffed out its cheeks and just and I just saw a big plume of steam damn yeah now, and then it just kind of looked away and looked back at me and went down um the hill a little bit and that's where i lost sight of it and i wasn't able what i'm guessing is that it kind of looped around me but as we uh talk a little bit further i don't want to get too far into it um I have reason to believe that there might have been a juvenile hmm. with it. Yeah. So you, there was no, like, mistaking it, like, oh, it could have just been, like, because years ago, I was driving back to uh, uh, to go lock up at a place that I drove, and uh, uh, the place that I worked, and because I thought I forgot the, the door, right? And there was just an old man in his underwear in the middle of the woods, like, just standing like this. And I'm like, what the fuck is happening, right? So there was no mistaking that it was, like, what we you would typically say is, like, a Bigfoot. Oh, like, you could clearly see that, like, covered in hair. There's, you could... no, there's no way that someone can make a costume that was that realistic. Yeah. There's no possible way. Um, I describe it as more like a uh, proto-human than um, what people like say sometimes gorilla it kind of had a um, face that kind of resembled the um, no structure and face of um, America's native people mm -hmm. which was um, pretty striking to me it looked human for the most part hmm. but there was distinct parts of it that weren't human i mean it was just way too big mm -hmm. absolutely way too massive to 
to even be close to a human. Hmm. I mean, you have a lot of these people that are, I mean, seven, six, well, you know, seven feet tall. Um, sometimes, you know, the people, the rare currents that they're eight feet tall, they're usually a lot skinnier. Yeah, but this, this guy, he was just like thick. Built. Yeah. Damn, dude. So, so you, you this is clear, like, you seem pretty, like, concise with everything, so everything sounds, like, pretty, you're like, okay, I saw exactly this thing. So you went back, and you, like, kind of, like, measured the area, and, like, so, what, actually, let's, let's back up. Let's, you, you see this, you see this thing standing there, and, like, you see, like, the breath, and it, it, like, just takes off. So you were driving, did you, like, stomp on your brakes? Did you, like, kind of, like, swerve a little bit? Like, what was the, what, what, and how did you, like, you, was it just kind of, like, what the fuck am I looking at, or is it kind of just all this, like, a, I mean, it was definitely more along the lines of what the fuck I was looking at. Yeah. And I didn't stomp on the brakes. Like I said, I thought it was a, you know, reflectors on a tree. So, you know, I was going a little fast, but, you know, I came slowly to a halt. And it was kind of like, oh, that is not a tree or a reflector or a human mm -hmm. for that matter. It was like, so when, when you were coming to it, like, just, it just stopped moving. Except, except for the arm up, you said, right? Yeah, so the, I believe it was the right foot that was in front of the left, and there's a slight um, slope that it was on that leads down to the pond that's below. And um, I, mean, I just caught it mid-stride, and I did what mainly stuck out to me at first was the movement of the arm, the right arm yeah. coming up over his eyes to shield his eyes. All right. So after the, and he goes away. So what did you, what did you do next? Did you just like, just start just driving away being like, well, did you call somebody? Out. What was the, yeah, I burned out. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get me out of here yeah. before something uh, crazy I, happens. I, 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 I lost track of it, and that's, I mean, I wasn't so much nervous, so yeah, I was afraid, but, I mean, this thing could have ripped off the doors if it wanted. Yeah, yeah. So, and I've gotten back, you know, a couple times, matter of fact, um, mm -hmm. we did have a print find nice. there for, um, I mean, if you saw on my page, and, um, the person actually found the prince is actually in the chat right now. Okay. With me. Is that uh Brian? Brian, yes. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so did you like cast the? I mean, I don't. You know, I've never seen anything like this, and I've only like I watch those TV shows and stuff. So, did you just take photos of it. Did you cast it? What was the? How did how did you? Uh, we uh, so we called up. Uh, this was a. Um, so this was a couple years afterwards. So this was this. March, I believe. Uh, Brian's in the comments. Please correct me if you have the um, correct date. Yeah, March. And um, what we were doing is that we were going to um, kind of just film like where I had the encounter. Mm -hmm. And Brian's, you know, I'm just always scanning the ground no matter where I am. Uh, especially out in the woods and his dog Chewy almost um, stepped in you know an imprint in the ground mm -hmm. on a pretty solid dirt road basically um, you know I, I cleared off a little bit of the leaves and there was toes what uh, became of these prints um, we called up a uh, buddy of ours that works for um, Small Town Monsters, mm -hmm. and uh, named Alex Fedikov, and we ended up um, getting him to cast the prince because we weren't prepared at all. Yeah, yeah. We weren't expecting anything like that, and we wanted to have them properly documented, and we even called up um, Cliff Berrifin of um, Finding Bigfoot, and the North American Bigfoot Center out in Oregon. Damn. Yep. And the best, the good part is Brian was recording the entire time. He always has his GoPro going, whether we're on hikes, walks, 
uh, that's what his YouTube channel basically is, um, Brian Should We Go Hiking, and I mean, I had to ask him if he was filming, and there's no way that he could have been out there, he never been to that spot before, before that day, you know, I don't get up early whatsoever, or, and I'm not, you know, a night owl either, none of us, well, neither of us could have made it out there, and there's nobody walking around barefoot out there at yeah. that. Hmm. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, we, there is, I mean, I was pretty reluctant on having that go on YouTube, but it, I mean, you can tell in the video we're shocked. Yeah. We were freaking out. Yeah, Brian was just said just record her a walk in the counter spot. It was luck got a reaction on film. Yeah, Brian, if you want to pop up the uh, link to the YouTube channel for so people can uh, head over, that would be that would be cool. Uh, so that means that there is an active Sasquatch within like twenty miles of my home right now. Because if that was a if that was this this, this past summer, is it whatever it was? That nah, oh past March that's what it was. Yeah, yeah, it was March. So, I mean, one, I'm going to tell you, there's they're closer than that. I'm into it. Judging me and you are in the same area. Yeah. Um, they're definitely closer than you think. Hmm. And even I was surprised. Because I know our yeah, well, our area has got a good amount of like homeless population, like it's kind of exploded over the past couple of years. So yeah. I wonder if there's any like you know, I mean I know they're not like deep woods, you know, or anything like that, but there's a lot of like kind of like tent camps that are out. So if uh, if you're stumbling across some kind of you know prints or something like that, I wonder you know what they're stumbling across or have come across as well. Just a kind of a side thought thing. I mean, you know, I mean, yes and no. I mean, there's the credibility aspect that you really have to look into. I mean, yeah. um, as you know, especially in our area, there's a uh, pretty big drug epidemic that's going on. <laughs> yeah, I think New Hampshire is ground zero um, for opioid stuff for a while. Number one for heroin yeah. in the United States. Yay, you know. But, uh, <laughs> All right. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> oh. So there was, um, I mean, I, I assume that, I mean, you're familiar with, like, the Blue Jove area, yeah. right? Yeah, I've been there many times. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh, so there's been... I'm not going to be in specifics, but I do have a uh, report that um, came from right on the other side of Blue Jove. So I, I, a lot of times I have a, I've got um, a, a business partner who uh, wanted to get on board and kept me con because I'm a full time tattooer and doing this is like my side thing that I like to do, you know, and I like to make all this stuff. So I was just like, all right, I need a little bit of help. So I was talking to her about like when you contact people who have had like experiences with like ghosts and that kind of stuff, like you've got to be you got to be a little, like, delicate about it because you don't know how they yeah, feel yeah, about people it. People get, uh, honest to God, PTSD. Yeah. So I was wondering, and, like, what, yeah. with with your experience, like, how, how has that affected you when, when you're coming around, you know, and you're just out in the wood, you're like, okay, there, I know that there's things around here, you know, kind of, how has how's that affected your like, kind of day-to-day? So, I mean... It hasn't affected me that much, mm -hmm. um, and I mean, over the years, I've done a lot um, of growing. I mean, I am 23, turning 24 this month. A baby. And, you know? <laughs> yeah, I'm a baby. I had my first child uh, early 2020, so I had a lot of right. growing yeah. and a lot of, thank you, um, a lot of growing and a lot of reflecting. Mm -hmm. And my, one of the things that I reflected on the most was my um, encounter. I questioned my sanity a little bit. Yeah. 
because it's something that is very unbelievable to the mm-hmm. average person. Mm-hmm. And I spent a lot. I spent a lot of time in the woods. A lot of time. I I forage. I fish. I hunt occasionally out in the woods. Maybe at least three times a week. And yeah. I mean, it, it's something that definitely does change your life. But I I saw intelligence in mm-hmm. the creature itself like you i can definitely tell like its mind was jogging not like a deer where it's just like looking back and forth back and forth like not knowing what the hell to do this thing had a thought process to it yeah. and pretty well it could have killed me that day and it decided not to and i think given a chance i don't think it would yeah i mean it didn't seem aggressive it didn't approach the car it kind of just was like what the hell are you still doing here and just kind of walked away yeah and it seems like that's kind of like the general theme with you know encounters and that kind of stuff it's uh it's a uh, it seems like it's not like an aggressive being it's just like leave me alone dude you know um no i mean that is a topic i mean we should probably get into i mean there is from what i mean reports have recorded and reported um, different variants across the world. You know, I mean, uh, down in the south, you have, uh, especially in areas of like Louisiana, mm-hmm. you have the stories of Rukuru, uh, up north, but with Algonquins, you got uh, the Wendigo, yep. which I talked to uh, a few native americans from those areas um especially up north and they believe that the wendigo is a um variety of sasquatch kind of like the wood devil in a way which Mm -hmm. if you look at the wood devil it's kind of uncanny to the non um mainstream version of the wendigo to the actual reported version of the Wendigo, gaunt, uh, grayish skin, mm-hmm. large mouth, um, very well cannibalistic, mimics noises, uh, there's been an instant, unnaturally fast, I mean, it's very well, I mean, there's a lot of alterations to native fol- folklore, especially with today with all yeah. you know the scary stories yeah. creepy pastas all that type of stuff mm-hmm. and you have all these people that are diluting this rich culture into a mainstream media that the media wants to see mm-hmm. but a lot of people do not recognize or familiarize themselves with the native cultures and legends and what they're actually saying yeah well because like what's What's, what's sexy and what's gonna sell, you know what I mean? Like, what's, like a, a violent, like, beast roaming the woods, or is it just gonna be like, oh, this, like, pacifist, like, hairy ape man, or it, the, you know, what what would you rather see? Like, I'm sure you've been up to, um, uh, the Cryptozoology, Cryptozoology Museum in Portland, which I'm sure yeah, everybody... I was just up there for weeks ago. Yeah, and I think I went... I've tried to go there over the years a whole bunch of times, and it was closed when I went, and then when I finally got there, I remember one of the things that kind of struck me about it was that you go in, and there's so much... There's so many, like, toys, and there's so many things about... Um, things about Sasquatch and, like, pop culture and all that, where in the first, like, five, ten minutes, I'm like, oh, come on, I wish they didn't have this stuff. But then after it, like, settles in my brain, I'm like... Oh, like it being so pervasive in our mainstream culture, it kind of it it pushed all the other like evidence, you know, that was around there. It didn't hinder it; it helped it. And I was like, okay, I kind of get this. Like, there's something to be said about this, like something that's so pervasive, you know. Um, so I exactly yeah, and and of course like horror movies and like what is it the oh like cryptozoological and paranormal field is basically people just trying to enact like real life horror movies you know 
because you get that little like creepy shit, you know. Yeah, I, I, I mean, realistically, you know, the paranormal, and even what I'd say, it being normal. I mean, it was normal for the native people mm -hmm. um, before everybody came overseas and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. It was uh, very normal for them to mention uh, Sasquatch. Yep. I think we, I think we uh, froze for a minute here. You got a... I can hear you now, but okay. All right, I think you're back. Perfect. Oh, maybe. Yeah, I mean, um... yeah, it was normal for like you know, in ever since. The paranormal industry and supernatural is the cash cow. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I remember. This is a super long story, and I won't even get into it. But me and some, uh, me and some friends almost got a reality show, um, uh, not about paranormal stuff, but I talked to the guy after it kind of fell apart and I was like if there's any ghost hunting shows hook me up I'm into it right and he the guy was just like well we're pretty saturated right now so uh, I don't think that's gonna happen and I was like all right man it was it was a guy that was friends with Josh Gates that show that um, Destination Truth I don't know if you ever uh, checked that one yeah, out Destination yeah so I was just like ah, just let me know let me know I'm into it so yeah, so you you had this experience, and then like yeah, you went back years later. But like right after you had it, did you go like the next day? Did you like call your friends and be like, "This shit happened"? So if you measured it, like how long did it take for you to go back and check it out? So, I mean, I drove through there a couple times afterwards um, throughout the years. Um, but I mean, Brian in the comments. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, we planned to go to both of our encounter sites that day. Hmm. Hmm. And, I mean, it, it doesn't really bother, it didn't really bother me. Yeah. I, I can't, I mean, I felt safe as long as I was in the car. And, yeah, you know, it pushed that comfort zone with me. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I mean, I needed answers. And... Unfortunately, um, some of the larger groups, uh, BFRO, for example, especially around here, aren't exactly too helpful. So yeah, so, I uh, I didn't know right. like what their presence really was around here. I know I've like quickly Googled them and just all that. So they are they just like is it just? I'm sure it's just like anything where there's like oh there's, do you want to set up a BFR BFRO chapter and there's like you know five people that do it kind of deal or is it like. Is it a little bit more organized than that, or what's the what's the deal with that? What's your been what's been your experience so, with that? I mean, from my um, there's not a big presence um, of the BFRO in Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. So, in the um, comments, we have somebody who's who's saying BFR who. I know it's the big foot, yeah, big foot research investigator of, uh, that goes out into uh, the field often with me. No. And uh, he's kind of the he's one of the main people in the New Hampshire Sasquatch group that oh, we kind of try to fill the gap. Nice. Oh yeah. So we can go, we can go back to the uh, the. So the BFO hasn't been very helpful, that's what you're saying? Yeah, from a lot of the people that have reached out to me, um, if you don't go with their theories or their beliefs, anything, they kind of just write you off and they won't believe really a word you say, they just discredit you. Hmm. And I, I think about maybe a quarter of my encounters that I've created, I mean, um, accumulated yep. over the last two years or so have mentioned that the BFRO kind of just turned them down and wolves in a way. Hmm. So since you had your, that, that first experience, you've had like many other ones since you've been like more aware of what's going on? I have 
I've been more aware. Um, I've done a lot of my research. You know, I'm very, very critical when it comes to stuff such as tree breaks, noises in the woods, yeah. um, wood knocks, so many things that you really have to consider when you're in the woods and I mean 99% of the things that you're going to find out in the woods are not Sasquatch related. I yeah. hate to tell people that are out there with Bigfoot on the brain that will think that okay Sasquatch came in my yard after the windstorm last night and knocked over this tree in my yard. Yeah I mean you know people see it on TV they're like oh shit it must be I mean I joke around with my with my fiance, she, cause since we live near Pease, you know, I'm just like, oh shit, look at that UFO over there, you know, just fucking around. So a lot of people get that. I can understand that. Cause do you remember that UFO uh, thing that happened? Um, I know that you're the, the Bigfoot thing is like, you're kind of like, you had an experience, but I don't know how much more active you are in like other things that are kind of like adjacent to it. But I remember there was a, yeah. There was a UFO sighting in um, on 16 on Route 16 in Dover, and I was like, I took a different route to work. If I took that route, I would have seen it. But it was a cigar cigar shaped uh, UFO. But so now I'm always like looking. I'm like, oh man, maybe I'll maybe I'll see something if it's been here once, kind of deal. So I kind of uh, you know, I, if you're out there and you're just like being like, okay, I'm aware of shits out here. What? what kind of like evidence can I see because there's people that have like been like oh well go on I went on a Bigfoot hunt and we know there's evidence of them feeding over here I'm like how do you know there's evidence of them feeding over here you know what I mean it's like yeah exactly like you can't be certain I mean I mean one thing I have heard of is um Sasquatch apparently um like to snap the legs of a deer to um pieces of shit <laughs> <laughs> yeah just kind of um incapacitate them yeah i guess that makes sense yeah uh, well if if i run across any deer carcasses that's what I'm, I'm gonna, that's what i'm gonna look for first and actually the bigfoot do it you know uh, yeah but like i said you can't just you know immediately write it off right. as Sasquatch as much as I would love to do so you really can't right right because otherwise then you're just like what's that like when you're a hammer every problem's a nail that whole thing you know you'll just see Sasquatch everywhere and then you're calling up radio stations saying that like Bigfoot stole my lunch kind of deal you know and you're like cool you know I've had some uh pretty interesting stories come my way um Sasquatch in the backyard listening to uh uh, in a downtown area with the aliens in the living room. And it's it's pretty out there. Yeah. There's some pretty not so people out there. <laughs> so if you so you have this uh this in, is it you have the website and the Instagram account and uh on the YouTube. So where do you usually get your um do you get your submissions from your Instagram account mostly? Instagram, yes. Um, YouTube has a. Uh, my database is really uh, overstocked in a way. I, uh, I'm, I'm definitely falling up behind on it. Yeah. But um, I, I'm definitely, especially with my new uh, job and everything, I'm making my own schedule, all that. Um, it's definitely going to be out there more. But believe it or not, Craigslist. Huh, alright. Is a big right. one. And you wouldn't expect that. And I just had the wild, crazy idea one one night to post that and I believe I put the area around um, Conway. And I think I had like in fourteen submissions off of that one post. Jesus. Yep. Yeah. Huh, maybe I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to troll uh, Craigslist yeah. to try to get some guests. <laughs> Come on and be like, although. 
Uh, I, quick side note, I cab drove for uh, about a year in Rochester because I was, I was too into conspiracies and I needed to like get out of the house. And uh, a whole bunch of people got on there and was like, uh, got in the cab and was like, oh yeah, hey, uh, if you ever need like company, like my, my wife, my girlfriend, like, and they would say like, they're, oh, it was Backpage, it wasn't Craigslist, but they're the same thing. And I'm like, dude, I don't know what Backpage is. And they're just like, oh, yeah, you do, yeah, you do. I'm like, no, I don't, you know. So, um, but yeah, so I always, I, always, I always put Craigslist and Backpage together. But now now that I'm actually, like, talking it out, I'm like, oh, yeah, those are those are two different things. But, yeah, it's the wilder side of the uh, like kind of Internet. Because I don't know many people that still go on Craigslist. So <laughs> people that are on there might yeah. be a little, little you know, get a little twin, twinge in their, their eye. So yeah, you're so you're getting a lot of people from Craigslist. So it, just in the Conway area. Uh yeah, so I did one uh, over in Lebanon, Conway, and Laconia. Hmm. So and, um, are you just trying to build like a yeah. database of like sightings and stuff like that in the in the area? I mean, I'm always on the lookout for sightings because that's I have a um, a uh, pretty large map that I put all the um, sightings on. Yeah. And a great uh, resource yeah. for anybody that's curious about it is the Bigfoot Mapping Project. Oh, I was on there like two days ago. It was awesome. I was like, holy shit, this is. Yeah. It is. Yeah, Scott is the creator of that. Uh, he lives down in uh, Texas. Wicked nice guy. He's going to be uh, creating a file for me. But I, I'm submitting all my sightings that I have submitted to me um, to the Bigfoot Mapping Project. And let's just say that New Hampshire is going to look like a Christmas tree very soon on that app. Damn, I can't wait to see that. So one thing that uh, yeah. hap- happened to me when I, like, you know, I, I used to run a um, conspiracy, like, website. Um, and it was when, like, YouTube was a little bit more Wild Westy and I got so like, But I had a... Um, I had notebooks and I was like filling out all this stuff and I got kind of obsessive with it. It doesn't seem like maybe you're that obsessive with it because you got your like you got a kid, you got your own job and all that kind of stuff. But like, has there been any yeah. kind of like, I don't know, like because I remember when I when I it was like four thirty in the morning and I'm writing down like people the actors that were in the JFK assassination and not to like pair the things together but they are linked. As much as we don't want them to be, to you want them to be, um, like I was like, what the hell am I doing? Why am I spending so much energy doing this? So, do you ever get that kind of being like, all right, I'm putting these together, or is it more casual and like, hey, I'm putting stuff together for the hell of it, like whatever, you know, kind of deal? So, it's definitely more casual. I mean, I never meant for it to take off the way it did. I mean, uh, my Instagram got, I think, 400 followers within the first week mm-hmm. of being um, So it grew rather quickly. But, um, I mean, over the year, the last two years, I haven't had a, a lot of time to focus a lot of my energy on... Um, Bigfoot as a whole, but especially with uh, the last few months, I've had a couple injuries and kind of incapacitated me in a way. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm definitely planning for 2023 to focus on YouTube more, go on some more expeditions. Um, I know that there's going to be another documentary that's going to be based in New Hampshire soon. I'm not going to say oh, really? uh, what it is. Yeah, if you want to look up uh, Small Town Monsters, there's um, on YouTube uh, Alex Petikov, who's a uh, New Hampshire researcher. Um, he has that whole series. They just recently went to Alaska and um, actually the print find, we did a documentary about that. There, We didn't really get anything else besides the um, track find, which mm-hmm. the only reason why the documentary happened for that was because of the track find. And, um, but yeah, I mean, 
New Hampshire's going to be lighting up pretty soon on the map when it comes to Sasquatch. Yeah. And not only me, but I mean, you have people like Brian in the chat who's going to me and him and uh, Ryan that's in the chat as well. Mm -hmm. uh, we are starting a podcast called the Wood Devil Podcast. Nice. Here nice. within the next months. So we're big foot on the map for New Hampshire and kind of take that try to take that stigma of um, taboo in a way away from Sasquatch in the Northeast mm -hmm. because people are pretty reserved around here when it comes to Sasquatch as a whole uh, opposed to the Pacific Northwest where almost every yeah. town has their own Bigfoot statue in a way yeah. and everybody knows someone that had a Bigfoot encounter mm -hmm. Yeah, there's definitely, like, a, I know a couple of the researchers for, like, you know, do all the paranormal or other, like, cryptid stuff, and they were just, like, one of the things about New England is, like, yeah, there's all this shit, but, like, nobody wants to talk about it. It's just, like, this weird block that we have, and I don't know if it's kind of like that, um, uh, that, you know, New England has that little bit of, like, you know, uh, off-putting, not off-putting, but, um, I'm trying to think of the right words for it, but, uh. Like, uh, go fuck it yourself, is, leave me alone kind of deal. Well about. I mean, people are very reserved to themselves up here. I mean, um, for example, Massachusetts, a bunch of mean people. Um, but down in um, Louisiana mm -hmm. and down in the South, you have the Cajun community that are pretty reserved to themselves. And it's kind of the same way down yeah. there than it is here people don't really talk about it to each other yeah everybody's kind of just like uh yeah leave me alone kind of deal yeah so yeah, so, exactly. so you got this yeah small town monsters is doing some great great work i've watched so many of their documentaries but like you know you watch them and it's like what is it uh a half hour of like the stuff and then somebody that goes out and, re and uh looks for stuff and then you're like all right it's the same kind of I get it. So I watch. Like, I usually watch like the first twenty minutes to get like all the history and that kind of stuff, and then I kind of skip the camping stuff with it because I'm like, eh, I get it, you know, kind of deal. Um, but it's cool that they're uh, gonna be involved up here. Um, I didn't know they had a presence up here. That's cool. I guess there's a Dogman thing that's coming out pretty soon. I don't know if you've uh, checked that out at all. That portion of Small Town Monsters are more focused on like Beyond the Trail. Yeah. Series. Small town monsters. I'm not overly a fan of the whole theory of uh, dog man in a way. I mean, if people are seeing something similar to that, yeah, sure. I mean, but yeah. I haven't seen something that would match that, so to say, with my encounter. Yeah. But that doesn't mean people aren't seeing it. But the difference between dog man and Sasquatch, dog man, you really don't have anything that is in the fossil record, but with Sasquatch, you have Gigantopithecus blackie. Yep. Yeah. yeah, so you're, 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 you're keeping yeah. it, kind of keeping it to what, like, you know, you, you've you you've seen and what you've been able to, like, what you can prove kind of deal, rather than, like, all these, like, myths and that kind of exactly. stuff. So that's cool. So, so with that, do you have, like, kind of, like, a top, uh, a handful of ones that uh, that you've gotten, like, sent to you that, like, you, that stand out? Because like, a lot of times it's like, oh, Bigfoot, look at my backyard, I saw them. Or, like, they, you know, pushed over my fence or something like that. Do you have anything kind of different that uh, that stands out to you that have been has been submitted to you? Um, I mean, there is one that I can really um, think of off the top of my head is um, one that happened in um, Mount Cabot, well, on Mount Cabot itself. Mm -hmm. um, the woman had her, um, I believe it was a German Shepherd, um, hiking up the trail with her, and the dog was a little bit ahead of her, and what happened supposedly was a... Um, the gray colored Sasquatch came out, grabbed her dog, and kind of held it in a in its neck and its hand. And she started crying because she was in such immense fear. The dog was whimpering, and the thing just like looked at her. And she said that it had a lot of malice in its yeah. um, eyes. And as 
can see Brian in the comments right here. He's not into it. He's saying, yeah, he knows what story I'm talking about. And the Sasquatch kind of just gave it, gave her this look that was like, I'll kill you too, basically, if you come any closer. Yeah. And she, the Sasquatch ran off after breaking the dog's neck and took the dog with him contact the police department in that area and fish and game and they uh, wrote it off as a bear attack supposedly now i don't have any access to the records for that i don't have any access to um i mean her anymore as yeah. a whole but it was a pretty traumatizing encounter and i remember she um i received a email and i talked to her on the phone as well and she was crying on the phone i mean she was very shit like she was very distraught about it and another one that comes from close around that area was one that happened in uh dixville notch next to the owl's nest or uh or whatever they call it uh, right below Tabletop Rock was a, um, I believe it was a fish and game officer, game warden, mm -hmm. and he saw a Sasquatch that he, um, on the left side of the road, I believe, he was heading down towards Errol, uh, New Hampshire, and he saw the thing just book, book it right back into the woods, and when he contacted, you know, his superiors about it he was like yeah we know that they're here but keep your mouth shut if you want to stay employed Jesus, yeah and yeah and i mean it's known around here and unfortunately i'm not gonna i can't bring up any names i don't I want you to stay very mess and i mean this is the first time i'm showing my face on camera in that matter mm. But, I mean, I like to keep everything on a down low of course. and for people that request their encounters to be anonymous because it can affect their jobs. Yep. For that yep. matter. But they, um, yeah, he, I mean, he's afraid for his uh, son to lose his position yeah. in Fish and Game right now. Yeah. So, yeah, me reaching out to like, people on, like, Reddit or anything like that, a lot, like, nine times out of ten is... People are like, oh, I would love to come on, but I can't because of my job. I don't want to lose my job because of the ridicule that comes along with that kind of shit, you know? It's a great part about being self-employed now. Yeah. Damn. But it's definitely a... I mean, I've had people of... I mean, pretty high up in the, you know, justice system. Hmm. Contact me. Supreme Court judges, I'm going to assume. We don't have to talk about it. I get it. <laughs> Not that high, but I yeah. mean, it's someone that can put you away if they wanted to. Yeah. Jesus. And the credentials checked out. Yeah. Well, I'm excited for, like, you know, the maps to come out and, like, the documentary stuff and all that. I, was, I wasn't aware of how many um, encounters there were actually in actually, New Hampshire. You know, I knew like a couple of the Wood Devil. I've done some searches, some basic searches, and you see like a handful of them, but I didn't know it was like either like yeah, they were all like super far up north kind of deal, you know, and like you know once every like twenty years kind of deal. I didn't realize that it was as intense as it as it is. Yeah, I mean, as I said before, it's just not well uh, well representation well represented around here, and um. I mean, from what I heard, the BFRO member that um, is the only person in the state for it, uh, she is pretty backed up because she has a, um, a teenager, that sort of stuff, you know, her own life. Yeah. And supposedly that's backed up about 300 reports. Jesus. So if that says anything, but remember, you have to, you know, fish out the hoaxes and you know people that just want attention yeah. which you can definitely tell from how they speak and changing up their stories yeah i mean even if one percent of them real that's 
what, like, that's three? I mean, that's still crazy to think about. There's three Sasquatch running around, you know? That's, that's, uh, that's, that's intense. And, I mean, just like with, um, I don't know what the actual numbers are, but, like, doesn't the black bear need, like, ten miles of, of, uh, ten square miles, kind of, of, like, of area to, like, live? I don't know exactly what it is. Black bear might be smaller than that because they're smaller animals, but I wonder. Yeah, I think it's smaller than that. I think it's three to five. Yeah. I'm not one hundred percent certain on that. Yeah. So but... if there's a if there's a bigfoot around, I'd assume they would need quite a large, quite a large <laughs> square footage to like move around. You know, so there's probably not a lot, but people are seeing the same ones. I mean, they definitely. They definitely seem to move through the air, uh, New Hampshire as a whole. Um, power lines especially is something that I've been um, meaning to start a project on. And I think there is at least um, 50% of the reports that I've received that there is power lines within three miles of. Yeah, because of the wide, like the, the just through way of being able to travel, you know, faster. Basically, yeah, and my, in my opinion, I mean, nothing that I have is set in stone, not even the prints that we did. I don't... Of course, yeah. I mean, I would say that they're set in stone, that they're Sasquatch, but I didn't see a Sasquatch make them. But a lot of people <laughs> do believe, and a lot of evidence points to it, that they use the power lines to commute around New Hampshire, and for that matter, the... Appalachian Trail. Yep. Going yeah. up and down the East Coast. Hmm. Is there? I mean, I haven't looked into this at all. Are there? Is there's a lot of uh, reports along the Appalachian Trail? Many. Many. Hmm. Many. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, I've, I've only I've only looked at like handful of the ones around here, so I've never. Yeah. I didn't know it was that. It makes sense. Yeah. Huh. So. What do you see, I mean, classic podcast interview question, what do you see, like, you're you're putting together this map, you're doing all these things, do you see kind of, like, what you want to do with either with your like your Instagram page or, like, do you want to put together, like, kind of, like, something, you know, uh, a comprehensive kind of list of, like, Sasquatch in the area since you did have this, like, intense, intense, like, physical sighting? Like, what are, you, what are your... What, what is you, or are you just kind of like going to like hobbyist kind of like eh, this is cool I'm just going to keep doing this to see what happens do you have any like plans or I mean it started off definitely as a hobby and I mean it still is a hobby yeah. um, but I definitely I mean I'm still young Yeah. and I definitely want to become kind of that you know voice for the voiceless in New Hampshire mm-hmm and the surrounding areas, I've even considered of um, renaming the Hampshire Sasquatch and to something that has to do with like the Northeast as a whole. Mm. Yeah, but to give it its own like, kind of like down the road. Yeah, give it its own. But um, it, it's to help people out. Yeah, and to voice their encounters, and I mean, maybe one day get us to the point that it's like in the Pacific Northwest. Yeah, because there's definitely, I know, like, northern New Hampshire, there's, like, that, in southern Canada, there's, like, that band of, like, kind of, like, where there, where people assume that Sasquatch is, but it be leaking down even to fucking Nottingham. Nottingham is, you know, is it 25 miles away from Portsmouth, which is kind of the, like, you know, one of the bigger, bigger, like, hubs in New Hampshire. Yeah, and you, you know something funny about that is that, my sighting is not the only one in Nottingham. Mm -hmm. There's one on the PFRO site. There's um, one that we... Actually, there's a couple that we came across. Um, I think there's about six other reports in that general facil uh, vicinity um, of about three to five miles. Damn. It's a big time cluster down in that area, but believe it or not, a lot of the reports that come from uh, New Hampshire that I've collected, at least, um, come from southern New Hampshire and um, a little bit around a cluster around the Belknap Range as well. Hmm. 
I got a uh, James R asked if there were any things in Gonic. I mean, I don't think there's anything in Gonic. <laughs> oh yeah, on those yeah, trails, but, right? yeah. Uh, I mean, Barrington, uh, Barrington. There is a few reports. Uh, there's um, reports down. If people are familiar, off of 202 and Barry River Road. There's yep. two of them on Barry River Road itself. God damn, yeah. I used to, I've been down that road many times. Yeah, and uh, one of them was apparently a Sasquatch ran by a, um, a woman's trailer, smacked the side of the trailer as it was going by, hmm. and she yeah, had the top of the head, which the top of the, um, which the window that she had was up about nine feet. Jesus. I remember I lived on the border of Barrington and Rochester years ago and it would come and it was um there was a river right behind my house and you'd always hear stuff in the woods and it was um you know how like a, a squirrel sounds like it's a giant animal in, in the woods at night you know kind of deal but I remember standing outside one night and I had I had a basset hound who would uh go outside but the so I was standing outside with him and I would just hear I heard like in the water like shoo like sloshing in the water i'm like that is like way too slow to be no i mean there is like the option like the possibility that it wasn't moose i've uh i've heard <laughs> and seen moose personally down um in rochester i've seen yeah so. yeah there was a one got a, one got a escaped Absolutely. in summersworth i remember escaped <laughs> ran around uh, downtown Summersworth like years ago, but uh, I know where Josh is going to go camping. Over high school as well. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, there was a whole article that there was a uh, on WMUR that there was a moose that was uh, grazing in like the baseball field or whatever. Oh, yeah. So like I was always I was like, why is there like a bear or a moose or something this large like in my fucking backyard? And I never saw it, never saw anything, but it was one of those things that every single night I'd get home from work and be like, what is that, you know, kind of deal. Um, so, yeah, there's definitely, like, room for larger things around here that's, uh, that, like, you know, might, you know, m could be Sasquatch, but I, know, I never even thought that, like, I mean, you always, like, joke about it, be like, oh, shit, Sasquatch in the backyard, but, like, I guess that's yeah. a very real possibility now. I've got four acres in my backyard. Oh, and what shit. people don't realize is that we are the second most forested state behind Maine in the yeah. continental United States. Yeah. There's a lot of room for, you know, a undiscovered possible primate to be mm -hmm. roaming around. Yeah. Well, I'm into it, man. I'm like, I'm excited to, uh, so do you have, so you're planning on kind of like doing some like, uh, Hunts, or I guess we you kind of talked about it on um on uh, Instagram, yeah, investigations, but yeah. investigations, yeah. I mean, I would me and like I've got like four, three or four other people that would love to like kind of be in on that kind of stuff because love the outdoors, love doing that kind of stuff, and interested in this stuff. None of, people that are open minded to be like, what is that? We'll we'll do we'll we'll look at some weird shit, you know. So I think oh yeah, we have a uh, we have a location in southern New Hampshire um, that we call Mouse Camp. That um, depending on the season, we have some pretty uh, pretty interesting activity to say the least. Trees getting pushed down. We have wood knocks. Damn. Uh, you know, the occasional possible vocalization. Yeah, so um, if, if you ever put anything I together, heard, uh, you should pop it up yeah. on Instagram or whatever, and, like, you know, I can I can get some people, or you can even message me, I can get some people, we could, like, go out and make a thing of it and just see what we can do, you know? D draw more awareness yeah. to this whole this whole thing that is uh, Bigfoot in New Hampshire, you know? Precisely. Precisely. Yeah. Uh, as Ryan saying, too, we have rocks thrown at us occasionally. Jesus Christ. Yeah. yeah, the rock throwing thing, I've never, like, I don't understand what an explanation of that could be aside from something doing, you know what I mean? Like, the rock's getting thrown at people, like, it's it has to be, yeah. you know, or there's yeah, wild yeah. wild men yeah. out, in the, out in the woods, you know, like, the missing 411 stuff where you're, they don't say it's Bigfoot, but, but it could it be, be, you know. Uh, yeah. 
Yeah, but, I mean, as, as in the comments, it's saying, uh, you know, rocks. Ryan was out with me on a few occasions where we had rocks thrown at us, and we were sitting there talking next to our uh, vehicles, um, and you know, we had two, three rocks thrown at us, and I actually found one of the rocks, and it was weird because it was the damp side of the rock was facing upward, and the other, the bottom part of the rock was completely dry. So it was sitting on the, um, the dry part that would be sitting up normally was on the ground on top of the grass. And my, me being me, I wasn't really thinking at the time. I threw the rock back in the direction that I came from. <laughs> yeah, well, luckily, you know, everything worked out. Man. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, this is all. This, everything sounds awesome. I, like I'm, I'm into it. Like if you ever like want to reach out and uh, either get something going or, uh, or like, you know, need any help with like drumming something up, or whatever. Like just get at me and we'll, we'll uh, figure something out. I'm, I'm into helping out the the cause in this in New Hampshire. You know. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, after the show, I'll uh, or uh, tomorrow I'll send you a message about that. And uh, we can definitely organize something. I mean, even this time of year, I mean, they're likely around. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I had a, I've got deer in my backyard and uh, and I bring my dog out and I'm just like, they're just laying in my backyard because I get fruit trees and all that. And I get up and I'm like, oh, they'll run away and all this kind of shit uh, when we get closer to them. But like the deers are starting to like hiss at me, which... Like, do deers fucking hiss at me? Like, what the fuck is going on right now, right? And yeah, uh, I've never heard a deer hiss before. Yeah, it, I mean, if they, if they grunt at you. Yeah, it yeah. was like it was like a like a high high pitch kind of like, and I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. I guess I'll go inside now. Thanks, you know. And uh, but uh, yeah, I'm guessing I'm during the rut. Yeah, maybe. I I don't know what the fuck's going on. But yeah, it's happened a couple times in my backyard, but every single night there's deer back there and I was like so I, I trudge through and look for shit, but you know, it's you know, I'm in I'm in I'm in the town that I'm in. We don't need to say where, but uh yeah. I never see anything like that. But yeah, I'm I I'm very definitely interested on any like hunts or anything like that we get into it. So get at me, we'll we'll figure something out and we'll do something cool. I'll definitely be in contact for that. Awesome. All right, Evan, man. Well, so, like, well, I guess we'll wrap it up. You got any, like, uh, do you want to, like, throw out your uh, socials and just, like, see if anybody wants to uh, follow your Instagram or anything else you got going? Yeah, on uh, Instagram, it's uh, New Hampshire Sasquatch. On, uh, you can email me as well, uh, New Hampshire Sasquatch at gmail.com, all one word, all lowercase. Right. And on YouTube, at New Hampshire Sasquatch as well. Um, YouTube is only at around 100 subscribers right now. I don't really post on it too much, but I will be posting more. Um, so if you're looking for it, go under the filters for the channels most, uh, most of the time with New Hampshire Sasquatch on there. You should be able to find it there. But it has been popping up more recently on the top searches for that. Perfect. Awesome, man. All right, yeah, I'll get it yourself. And when I, when I get the uh, podcast studio all built, we're still working on that. I'll definitely have like a live show and we can like chat more and uh and talk more about some stuff yeah i'll try to bring in uh, one of the tracks for you awesome that would be awesome yeah. all right Evan. absolutely well you have a good evening thank you so much and uh, i'll be in contact soon awesome thank you all right See take you. care man all right that was uh that was pretty that was pretty cool yeah we had a lot of uh i didn't know how many uh how many sightings there were in New Hampshire, how many things were going on in New Hampshire. So I'm pumped that uh, I was able to get, get him on and talk about this. Yeah, Kelly, this is this is pretty cool. Um, I'll have to go back through. Like I read like a handful of uh, the posts on New Hampshire Sasquatch on Instagram. And I was just like, oh, this is pretty cool, you know, kind of deal. But it's, it's different when you talk to somebody about it because you can kind of see that you're like, okay, this is way more active than you know you can scroll through posts or like oh what was this 10 years ago kind of deal so yeah brian like i didn't i didn't know how active of a state it was and i'm excited for it because i love all this shit 
Yeah, I've been on the Bigfoot mapping project uh, before, and I I love that. I just found them like maybe like two weeks ago, so um, it was cool to see like all those like uh, infographic stuff um, to to just like be like, oh, I wasn't aware, you know. So yeah, a lot more shit going on than I actually thought, and I'm I'm excited. This is all very cool. So let's go back in the chat just to see, yeah, the power lines are like highways uh, of the, of like Bigfoot and shit like, shit like that. Yeah, you see how wide those things are? Plenty of room. People can, <laughs> things can uh, go back and forth with all that stuff. Um, Ryan, hope all is well. Thanks, Ryan. I appreciate it. I would like to uh, hear your, um, your encounter sometime soon too. So maybe we can hook up and get you on and we can figure that out. I think Brian or Ryan, which I don't know which one of you has uh has the the encounter. Yeah, I'm like uh I just finished I'm almost done with the Wood Devil, so Kelly, you'll be happy. Oh Brian, thank you. Yeah. We'll get you on, we'll chat a little bit and uh like I said I have uh I'm getting like I said I'm building the uh the the Helm of Podcast Studio, so when that gets up and running, I'll have like, like plan is to have like a big couch and have a whole bunch of people in and stuff like that, so I can actually like talk to people in real life rather than, you know, doing this thing. I mean, I like doing this on Pop Shop; it's cool, but I also like uh, having like a real time conversation too. Yeah, thanks for coming in. I appreciate that. So yeah, so uh, got a handful of things people want to uh, take a look. I got the Lord of the Forest uh, screen print. Up, that just popped up towards the end here. So thanks for everybody that gave um, Evan some tips here. I'm gonna send it off to him probably tomorrow um, after I process all the orders and stuff like that. So yeah. So did anybody have any um, anybody have any like highlights that they enjoyed for the you know during the entire show? Anything that stuck out to them? I think mine was. Uh, he, Evan clearly saw, like, the Bigfoot put his arm up in front of his eyes to, like, shield it from, like, the headlights, which is pretty intense. Richard Doty interview with Stephen Greer, story about the peas, it's about halfway through. All right, yeah, I'll check that out. Thank you. Yeah, there's a, there's a, yeah, a whole bunch of, like, New England kind of uh, lore, but it's good to be directed to some of these things. Appreciate that. All right. Well, I guess we'll, uh, yeah, the, I guess we'll, uh, call it for the night. You know, we had a good, uh, good time. So, um, thanks Evan for coming on and thanks for Ryan and Brian for, uh, coming in the comments and figuring the stuff out. So it's, uh, yeah. If you want to go to Hellmouth Paranormal on Instagram, that's where we are. I also have the Hellmouth Paranormal dot com that's where like all the things you can buy um that's all like store and kind of website stuff too so all stuff's up there when something happens that you can't explain it leaves such a scare in your memory you never forget it yeah i think uh i've never had anything like that and stina of laser blade has like that's because you want it too bad i'm like that's true i would love we went ghost hunting a couple months ago and I just wanted to, like, get scratched on the face or anything. But nothing happened whatsoever. It was such a bummer. But, um, yeah. Uh, I don't even remember where I was going with that because I've had, like, a couple beers. So, uh, oh, yeah, when something happens. <laughs> uh, what do you think of the Florida skunk ape? Same as Bigfoot or something different? I think locally there's going to be different names for these things. But it doesn't mean that they are different entities. Um entities but for different creatures because there's a whole bunch of like kind of like side sasquatch uh uh names like i think one of the ones is the the hide behind because like that's like a big one but you're just like okay it's just another bigfoot you know so bigfoot's kind of like the blanket and then there's like smaller like sex of them so um i think that's the best way to kind of describe it Yeah, they all just look a little different. I love that that skunk ape picture that uh, that's around. That's like one of the ones where I was like, "How the fuck do you explain this?" You know, like a bear. There's still a bear at the core, but different types. Yeah, different kind of uh, 
different kind of like shapes, sizes. Rich man, you you missed a hell of a show, hell of a show. But uh, I recorded all of the audio, so I'm gonna put it up on uh, put it up on YouTube with like some some kind of like visuals just to have it on there. Yeah, it was good. It was good. I'm very excited. So on Monday, I'm gonna have Carly the village. Uh, she's the village tarot witch on uh, Instagram. On Monday, we're gonna have her come on and we're gonna discuss um, what a ghost life is like day to day. So, because that's one of the things you never really hear about is a ghost. Like, yeah, oh, they just like kind of like what happened in your real life, but like when you are dead, like what do you really do? You know. So we're gonna try to contact a ghost and we're gonna uh, try to uh, talk to them about that. My YouTube, it's uh, the Hellmouth Paranormal. I think you just Google it. There's only like two videos up because Pop Shop. You can't download the videos and screen recording the videos. Like, kind of gets it gets a little like jittery and stuff. So when I try to pop it up, it like it doesn't work so well. So I've been trying to um, figure that out. So I'm recording the audio and then I'm just gonna put it on YouTube. So yeah, you can look it up at Helmo of Paranormal. Um, it's up there. So thanks, Brian, for asking. So yeah, man. Uh, yeah. Cool. All right, everybody. Well, thanks so much. We got a, a couple of things in the store. If you just want to check that out real quick before we leave, before we leave, see if you want anything. Uh, remember, your shipping is five ninety nine. You can get pretty much anything for that, like blanket shipping of five ninety nine. So, um, yeah, I got the pins, all the stuff. So you can check that out, and all that. Yeah, I'm excited for next week's show too. But I have to pee so bad because I had these uh, drinks. So I am gonna take off. Hope everybody had a good night, and thank you for popping on in. And, uh, yeah, we'll uh, talk to everybody later. Kelly, Kelly, you came in at the last minute of the show. So, thanks. James, thanks for sticking around the entire time. Appreciate it, man. All right, everybody, have a good night. See you.